everyone, this is Renee from iMore, and right now we're gonna take a quick look at OS 10 10.11 El Capitan. OS 10 El Capitan is intended to be a smarter and more refined experience for your Mac. OS 10 10.11, technically, it's called El Capitan because El Capitan is a granite monolith inside Yosemite. So the naming convention is sort of like when we went from leopard to snow leopard or lion to mountain lion. Some of the new features include split view. They previously had full screen mode, but they didn't always let you take best advantage of a large display or multitasking. So now you can have two apps side by side. I like it. I actually wrote my first look using split view. You. There's a new mission control that flattens things out and respects the spatial placement of your apps so it makes things easier to find and it even makes it easier if you just want to drag an app to a new desktop, to full screen or to the new split view mode. You can even shake your cursor now to find it which sounds silly but it's actually really helpful. Spotlight has gotten a lot more intelligent. It's sort of like Siri. It doesn't talk to you yet, but it does have more data in it, like weather and stocks and sports. And you can enter natural language questions, like show me documents about El Capitan I worked on last week, or show me email I ignored from Kevin, and it'll find all of those things. And it works in Spotlight, in Safari, and in Mail. You can even reposition and resize Spotlight now. Notes app has been totally redone. You can now drag in websites, audio messages, pictures, documents, and make checklists. So you can really collect everything about a project in one place. You can even send stuff directly to notes to a new note or an existing note from a bevy of other applications. Safari has gotten some really cool new features. Now if an audio source is playing and you don't know where it is and you just want it to shut up, you can go to the new audio icon and click it to turn all sound off or click and hold and you can just choose selectively which tabs you want to mute. You can also pin tabs now. So there's, if there are sites like iMore uh, or maybe Twitter and Facebook, you can keep those in the sidebar in small icon form and they'll always be ready for you to reference. You can also airplay video now, just the video. You no longer have to share your entire screen like some kind of animal. There's a new web inspector as well for people who do development. Mail in full screen mode now gets a sort of multitasking drafts the way that iOS has had them. And it also gets gestures so you can swipe to either delete or to mark a message as unread. And those swipes exist in messages and notes and a bunch of other apps as well. Maps has gotten transit directions. It's in a lot of cities in China, only a few cities outside China, but Apple's gonna be expanding that. There's a special map view just for transit and you get directions that combine walking. So if your bus stop is away from your train station, it'll show you how to get there as well. Photos will be getting some great enhancements. There's new editing extensions, which are like the photo extensions in iOS, and they allow developers to make filters and special effects that you can use right in the Photos app. There's also better organization for photos, faces has been optimized, and there's a lot of great stuff. Uh, it's unfortunately still not open an external editor, but that's gotta come eventually, right? Uh, for the performance stuff, Apple has bought Metal. They're writing to the Metal framework from iOS to the Mac, and they're sort of making it encapsulate both OpenGL, the open graphics language, and OpenCL, the open computing language, and they're putting core graphics and core animation, two of their major frameworks, right on top of it. That should lead to significant performance enhancements, not just for games, but also for pro apps, like things made by Adobe or Final Cut. For security, they're doing a lot more to protect average users from malware. They're, they're basically sealing off the root uh, partition, they're making a trusted chain the way they did in iOS. They're also hoping to make security better in connections. So they're using TLS 1.2 as sort of the minimum standard and pushing people to go even beyond that. For privacy, uh, instead of doing everything on the server the way Facebook or Google might, Apple's doing the internet stuff on the server, but then bringing that down and keeping your data on the device. Uh, it may seem like a subtle difference, but if you care about privacy, it's something important, and it's great that we have the choice. For typography, we're getting a new system font. Yes, they just switched uh, from Lucida Grande to Helvetica, but now they're switching to San Francisco, which is an Apple-made font, and it looks beautiful. There's a lot of there's a lot of thought and, and care put into it. And the same thing for Chinese. There's a new system font there too called Pingfang, and a new predictive input method for Japanese. For developers, there's new APIs for the Force Touch trackpad and for the Taptic Engine. There's also things like uh, collection views and text kit and stack views that should make even better apps for us eventually. Now, OS 10 El Capitan is available in developer preview right now. There'll be a public beta in July and it's gonna be shipping to everyone for free this fall. I've been trying it out for about a week. I like it a lot so far. It really is more of a refinement, more of a polish of Yosemite. And the good news is any Mac that can run Yosemite can run El Capitan. And that was OS 10 El Capitan. For lots more information, including our first look, our FAQ and more, keep it locked to imore.com.